apologize for the last uh, problematic trip to here, which made me arrive with a little delay. Uh, before we go into, into the business matter, I think where the development of a simulation cannot be uh, understood if uh, we don't uh, take care, uh, take into consideration the uh, technological development, which uh, the dramatic, uh, what is it? Uh, Okay, uh, the Tensin, the computer power uh, uh, rise dramatically and uh, uh, constantly over the year. And uh, apparently there is uh, uh, possibly no yet in sight, uh, no yet in sight, although there are many doubts now that we are hitting problems of, uh, of uh, power consumption that might uh, slow down a little bit uh, um, this development. But I mean, I'm uh, rather old. I've seen uh, heard over the years uh, processes of doom and gloom that uh, eventually had to uh, not to be correct. Uh, there is a, as many of you might know, there is a uh, site on, on, on the on internet, top 500, which lists uh, the uh, most powerful computers at the moment, uh, it is every six months it's updated, and it's a really interesting from the point of view of the development of the world to see wh where the fastest computer nowadays are, and uh, uh, number one, as you can see, China, the fastest computer in it, and we have the United States, as we expected, Japan, and down here we have uh, uh, Germany, Europe, uh, not far away from here. And there's another China. Yeah. This machine is really enormous. I don't know whether you have uh, ever seen one of them. This is the Chinese machine. That's uh, the machine. Uh, it's a blue jean, uh, uh, IBM machine uh, in Zurich. Uh, and this is Titan in off grid, uh, really huge with uh, the power of hundreds of thousands of processors uh, and uh, put to work together on the same problem. Uh, and, uh, it's also impressive uh, because I mean, when people measure the, the speed of computer in terms of their uh, flow, Uh, mm, uh, uh, mathematical operation are, are, are performed, uh, that doesn't really give uh, a full impression of the progress because of this speed is usually measured on simple operation like a matrix, a vector, uh, multiplications. Uh, I, I think it's even important to see the progress in real application. I owe this uh, slide uh, to Thomas Schulter, who is the uh, director of the Swiss uh, National Computing Center. And uh, the, the IEEE has a, has a, has a, has a competition on, on the, on the so-called uh, Gordon Bell Prize, which is uh, given to the most uh, uh, performing application year after year. And you see this uh, steady, uh, steady growth from gigaflop to teraflop to petaflop for real application and the next big so big, uh, uh, big uh, step will be the exaflop computer in which there are many, uh, which many done are working. Uh, one characteristic aspect of our times is not only the fact that the top computers are, are coming up faster, but I mean the, 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 the notebook has the power that in the past a uh, supercomputer had. So this makes available to a vast uh, number of, of scientists uh, enormous computer power. 
And I, I can, that's my own experience. So that uh, kindly, Dr. Wuppen, as, uh, as mentioned, uh, uh, our work with Roberto Carr, uh, this was done while we were in, uh, no, we were in Trieste. And uh, this is the machine that we used to have. And uh, it was, uh, we didn't have, have access to it. We would uh, take our code, we put a uh, punch card, take this Draco uh, card. There was uh, like a priest with a white coat whom you gave this deck of card, and uh, after a while it would come up and give you print out like this, which uh, many times was full of Fatalero. Okay, anyhow, so that was how it is, and that's what we needed uh, to use uh, this relatively big machine uh, in those days, and then. This is instead the same code which we were using there is now has been ported by Professor Maltari into a Nokia that's just a telephone number, a telephone like this, which has uh, the, uh, uh, had the Linux operating system, and so the code was ported. Okay. So, uh, all this uh, uh, glut of computer power has is, uh, is fostered the revolution and uh, uh, that, uh, in the sense that there were two traditional approaches to type, one the theoretical, analytical, and the experimental. Uh, now this is complemented by, uh, by simulation. And uh, there's practically no field of science in which computer simulation has not had his uh, impact. And unfortunately, if you look at finance, uh, one might uh, regret uh, that, uh, <laughs> the fact. Okay, and that's a, that's a classical picture that uh, you can now decide this like this tool, which stands on three legs, experiment, the theory, and simulation. Not this like a theory always has somebody very scruffy, and simulation is somebody that goes mad and swear at the machine. Instead, the experimental is this little nice kind of Okay. Uh, of course, there are very many, many, many forms of atomistic of simulations. We will focus on what is that specialty is uh, atomistic simulations. So Description of matter starting from its uh, elementary constituents, to start the atoms and the molecules. And one has always to, to, to ask oneself uh, why one does uh, this kind of simulations. And here I, I have to I always have to think why you do what you do, uh, besides getting, uh, getting a salary at the end of the month. Uh, so you want to complement the experiment. The experiment, they provide us only with a limited amount of information. So we can really get insight into what is the physics of the system. We can replace difficult, expensive, or dangerous experiments. Imagine now that we are doing experiments with radioactive material, so with poisonous material uh, that can be done. Uh, predict the new phenomena, it's of course, uh, uh, and I, I, I like to look at uh, the simulation also as a kind of virtual microscopy because uh, we do our simulations and then uh, there are all these wonderful graphical uh, programs which allow us to see how in great detail how the atoms move and combine and uh, behave uh, with a resolution which is uh, not allowed in real life microscopy. Uh, the other, the other, the other, it's a, a really a new trend, especially in material science, also, also in biology, but I would say in material science, one explores the possibility of calculating a uh, number of properties, uh, uh, <coughs> properties of interest for a very large number 
of uh, uh, possible materials so that uh, one can make screen, uh, screen uh, different compounds for a given property and uh, without having to do the experiment one can find the optimal solution. That's what they call material economics. Okay, so let's see what we do. So our bases are rather old and are uh, based on the three of, of uh, Newton and its uh, equation of motion, which tells us uh, that uh, the mass times the acceleration is equal to the force. So if I know um, that this equation assumes uh, that the particles that we are considering, in this case the atoms, are, 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 are uh, heavy enough to be handled uh, in, uh, with the classical equation of motions. So if you know the interaction between the forces, uh, I can solve this equation on the computer, uh, the interaction between the atoms. Uh, I can solve this equation on the computer and, uh, and deduce uh, the behavior of matter in this way. So the question is how are we going to have uh, to, to find out what uh, this force and, and for this, uh, for justifying what comes after, I, I would like to, to uh, present, show you this picture, uh, which is the, the been obtained with a microscope, the scanning, scanning microscope invented by uh, Binnick and uh, Heidi Roller. Unfortunately, Heidi died a few months ago, big gross, and they invented this microscope, it's very simple, which allows you to see, for instance, in this case, the surface uh, of silicon, and see that each atom here, it looks like uh, a little sphere. Here's a nice We can infer approximation. Look uh, at atoms that uh, have the sphere that uh, interact uh, among uh, them. So there is a physical basis. And uh, one of the first persons to realize uh, probably the first uh, simulation of, uh, of a real material uh, in the modern sense of the way was performed 64 years ago by a Mr. Bachmann, and uh, he very studied the uh, liquid atom. And why liquid atom? Because the liquid atom, if you might recall your chemistry or physics, it's a rare gas. It means that uh, the forces between the atoms very small. And uh, the interaction potential is depicted here as a functional distance. If I, if I bring two atom atoms together, then eventually the sphere, which you have seen in the previous picture, will uh, repel each other, and then there leads to this sharp rise in the potential. A long distance is the so-called Wanderbach force, which is well understood. And so, therefore, the interaction between two argon atoms is uh, easy to model. There will be a repulsive potential here and a long range of one over R. And, and, and then, uh, so we have a good model for the forces. We can put uh, this model in the equation of motion and calculate all sorts of properties. This, this is called zero value, <coughs> but it's not. Uh, interesting so much as something that experimentalists can also make. Also the other thing I want to, to, to underscore is that the simulations uh, are becoming more cheap, but sometimes they tend to be expensive and you want to use the uh, simulation whenever they are needed. It's not uh, accidental that Danis uh, looked uh, for liquid alcohol. Because if we look at the solid state, the solid state is very well off. You can have similar in this time. Uh, on the other hand, we have a gas. Gas is the extreme of it's total chaos. So that's also a very simplification, great simplification in our description of the system. Liquid is the state of matter, which is kind of in between. It's very disordered, but it's a kind of local order. And, uh, and uh, uh, sometimes I say it looks a bit like uh, Italy to me. 
And of course, as I stressed, that is the uh, model for, uh, for the interactions. Uh, of course, uh, the, in the case of Alton, the chemist of Alton is very easy and very easy to model. But I mean, if we complicate our system, things become more, more, more complex. Okay, there is the molecular forces, the, the bond state, the bond band, torsion. Because we have to worry about electrostatic interaction, an Arton sphere with Newton, Van der Waals against Luxtet, and then if you go to metal, there is also another class of all of the things, not this one, but none of what is that. And this model with this approach is very much used. You have to give an example which is relevant for proteins. Uh, uh, so if you have a molecule, a molecule will be box stretch, it will be uh, extra this, this, that, this. We have a bending, and we have also the interaction. So we also the non-bonded interaction. Interaction between one molecule and the other. We have uh, the partial short range, the Van der Waals, and if uh, the molecules are charged, have uh, full of interaction. So, uh, with this simple ingredient, uh, and uh, the ingenuity of generation of uh, uh, chemists and physicists, uh, now this, uh, this models, uh, they are good to do it over here, I think they are not perfect, but they are good enough. And I would like here to, oh, the color here is totally different on the color there. Uh, in my screen, these are water molecules, and they are red. <laughs> Maybe it's more uh, realistic with this color rather than that red water. OK. So uh, so what, what is this picture? Why am I showing it? Okay, first uh, let's see what the, it depicts. Here there is a protein which is called aquaporin. And uh, this is a cut, a cut through the protein. And inside the protein there is a small channel where the water molecule can go up and down. Here, I mean, in this part of the picture, and not shown because otherwise uh, it would be too messy, there is a membrane. It's a membrane like the one that envelops our cell. And uh, this uh, move is aquaporin. The function of this, uh, of this protein is to regulate uh, the content of water between the inside and the outside <coughs> of the cell. And uh, at the same time, it doesn't allow uh, a proton or ions to grow through. And there is a very tricky mechanism which, uh, by which it prevents protons from moving across. But uh, that's not the moment. The reason why I'm mentioning it is because uh, if you go to the Nobel Prize uh, uh, site uh, and uh, look for the Nobel Prize, uh, the, the pages are dedicated to the Nobel Prize for this gentleman, Eger, who solved the structure of this protein, uh, one of the evidence that supported the dead crystal structure of Eger is mentioned to be a simulation by Klaus Schulter. So that means that the real simulation has, uh, has come of age 
and uh, it is uh, an, an epimus, epistemological uh, uh, relevance which for many years has been denied by more conservative uh, areas of science. So, so, if we have good models for cultivating the interaction potential between the atoms, then we can go the wrong way. One can do molecular dynamics, or even Monte Carlo, that's another way of sampling. <coughs> and, uh, uh, but, uh, but there is a limit, because empirical potential are very efficient, because you can just to calculate the few distances but there is an important phenomenon like chemistry. Here, an example I bring you this is the double helix of DNA. And I mean, what can happen in DNA if, uh, um, if a gamma ray impinges on it, the uh, radical is formed, and this uh, uh, hole can jump on long ways. Uh, um, electrostatic potential changes, a phenomenon which can't really be described by effective potential. It's something which is very fast mechanics. And, then, and, and the reason, so we need to enrich the description of matter, which so far uh, was based on looking at uh, atoms, really at uh, spheres, uh, we enrich it uh, by going to a lower level. What are atoms are made of, they're made of a nucleus and electrons, and they are the electrons that uh, form the, the chemical bond <laughs> by, by changing the arrangement that they can form a break bond and uh, they give rise to the whole complex chemistry that surrounds us. So uh, the, the, the issue is how are we going to treat the electrons? We know the ions tend to be Massive, uh, most of them, not all of them, neither of them is not the real the massive particle, but we will go back to that further uh, uh, on in my discussion. Uh, 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 but the uh, electrons, I mean, electrons are quantum by definition. So if you want to improve the electrons, uh, I have to use the equation for quantum ways of approaching to the problem. One is uh, the Schrodinger, and uh, this is the Schrodinger equation, and there is a, 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 an efficient way of <laughs> essentially solving approximately this equation for the ground state properties, which is called the Dancing Functional Theory, and that's uh, Walter Kohn, who a decade ago or more got the Nobel Prize for uh, this very important theoretical development. And most of the calculations that I, I will present, essentially all, are based on this formulation of uh, many body uh, electron theory. Okay, so having uh, uh, said that, uh, so I find I think density functional is, uh, is at present the most viable way of, of, of doing this calculation. So, a long time ago, with Roberto, we combined molecular dynamics with electron structure. And uh, the result was first of all, can calculate the method that's been mentioned. And that, of course, seems uh, in principle. Uh, uh, without parameters, there's no fitting parameters, so that uh, accuracy of particular power is tend to struggle with uh, fitting the parameter of your potential. You have uh, access to uh, all the properties that depend on the electrons, like infrared spectrum, Raman spectrum, NMR shift, electron spin resonance, and so on and so forth. And uh, these are uh, certainly uh, properties which the uh, experimentalists can access to and they provide a good gauge for the quality of it. 
intelligent form and complex thing. Yet we have the acting ideas, but they are not so ugly from my experience. So the colors have gone. Okay, so this is the uh, Pinter 85, has been a uh, uh, complex industry with mainly also being developed. Uh, and uh, just to say that many people have adapted uh, our idea to the means, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, many people use this kind of approach. Now, uh, I will show a few examples where I believe, uh, I believe uh, uh, these acquisition methods are needed, and later we shall move to what next. Okay. Um, I thought, and uh, this is the only calculation performed in my group, but uh, so this is a strange alloy. It's a lithium aluminum. And it's not a real battery material, but I mean, it's a gas, you know, battery material. So it can be uh, looked for this, uh, in this uh, uh, reason. Lithium, uh, and if you know, is a metal that everybody knows. Aluminum is also a metal. Yet, uh, if you form the alloy, lithium aluminum, it's not a metal. It's not a matter. Why well, it's called it's called, it's called the Winter compound in the German case, the Winter was German, I think it's German. And, and the, the, the fact of the matter is that there is a, a difference of electronegativity between lithium and aluminum. Lithium likes to lose its electron, aluminum is so happy to take it, so one electron uh, goes from lithium to aluminum, and this becomes almost uh, a, a ionic crystal. And I have here a vacancy, a, 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 so a missing position in lithium. So the electron, aluminum, if you remember, has three electrons in the valley. If I add one extra electron, I can form sp3 bonds, like silicon. And therefore, aluminum forms uh, this uh, diamond type structure. So, uh, this is a very delicate uh, chemical, uh, chemical thing, and I don't think uh, there is any other way, any other way of, of, of simulating this very uh, part uh, fully happy. But it doesn't matter. They should be, since we are talking of batteries, it should be a little movie. I hope you can hear it. This has been done at IBM, but there is a lot of publicity. Finding new and better 
but there is space on this, uh, on this calculation, and that I will also, also some uh, uh, patterns based on, on this calculation. This I find again comes from IBM, but uh, it's accidental because I, my, I used to work for IBM a long time ago, and I left. Uh, I left uh, part of my group there, and they're kind enough to update me on, on what they do. And since they work for the industry, they have to justify their uh, salary on the basis of practical results. And they find that using that, uh, uh, so we, we do this calculation using computers, and uh, through this calculation, new materials for computers can be planned. And uh, so that uh, one could say from computers to atoms and back. And, and again, they have, uh, they have changed the way the technology has evolved in the company, and they have a number of patents for the computer based discussion. Okay. So, enough of practicality, although this is a uh, rather practical thing, it's application done, not taken by you, but uh, at uh, UC Davis, in collaboration with Shell, and uh, there is a big project uh, in the state uh, to study further uh, in detail manner the balance of carbon in the earth, the way it's formed, the way it goes, and so on. And not surprising, uh, Shell is interested in uh, finding out where hydrocarbon come from. And uh, normally, as you know, everybody knows that hydrocarbons, they, they, they are supposed to come from the decay process of organic material. But uh, they found instead, uh, not instead, that uh, there is an important source of, of carbon and hydrocarbons uh, from the mountain. And what happens there, that you have here carbonate, which are dissolved in uh, the under high pressure and temperature, so conditions which are difficult to uh, realize uh, in the laboratory, and uh, if you take the carbonate, uh, uh, even if you don't know chemistry, you know that the carbonate is poor, it's horrible. That's what we, forms the scale. So if you take in your washing machine, uh, you have all this white stuff, uh, that's carbonate, the carbonate which is not easy dissolvable and precipitate. And uh, uh, instead of this high pressure and temperature, uh, iron carbonate uh, can, can be dissolved uh, and form uh, new compounds, uh, and this can be transformed uh, up to the surface of, of the earth. And this is, uh, illuminates one of the points that this simulation can be used uh, to study, uh, uh, to perform experiments which otherwise would not have been uh, feasible. <coughs> that's a more fun, uh, that was interesting, you say. But, uh, that's the simulation in Bochum, uh, done by Professor Ma uh, Marx, and uh, he's interested following the work of uh, 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 this gentleman there, uh, so once the heart is formed, uh, the basis of life, the uh, amino acid, uh, so what is the chemist that led to the formation of the amino acid? And one of the scenarios is that uh, amino acids are formed in, in the ocean. In the ocean there are certain, there are very volcanic activities, there are these volcanic vents. Uh, where there, are, there is pyrite and there is high temperature, sulfur and so on, and uh, it is possible that, uh, that uh, uh, the 
and it performs also some experiments, and, and, and it's possible that uh, the conditions are right there for the formation of amines. And uh, this comes out of this uh, very complicated uh, uh, thing, uh, chemical scheme, uh, uh, the bottom line of which is that uh, indeed uh, it is possible to form hydrocarbons. So this can be used to illustrate complicated systems in extreme conditions. So now we, we go to a more, more mundane application uh, from a friend. Uh, the movie is really beautiful in the colors that I have here. Uh, so, uh, water, it's so important. One important property of water is its pH, namely, some occasionally, some water molecules dissociate into proton and you know, H minus. And the question is how it takes place. That's a typical phenomenon which we form bonds, break bonds and form new bonds. And uh, to understand this phenomenon, which is crucial for uh, chemistry and also for, for biology, the only way of doing it that we perform in this artificial simulation. And uh, unfortunately, without, uh, without uh, good colors, can see, so there is a certain point, a rare event, where, well, okay, this gives a, a proton to this guy, this gives it to this guy, this has lost one proton. So eventually, at the end of the process, by huh, moving, huh, uh, shuttling proton around, we have a situation where we have separated the the water molecule, one proton has gone here to the left to form what we call the hydronium, so one water molecule with an excess proton, and the other is a negative charge, so one water molecule without one hydrogen hydroxide. And while we are on the on the on the on the subject of, uh, of, uh, of proton diffusion, I want just to mention very impressive simulation performed here in Munich by uh, Professor Carroni, where he had the membrane, he has water, he has proton, and this is a situation again like at the surface of a cell. And there were experiments uh, which could not be understood, uh, and also simulation of a non initio type, which uh, didn't explain uh, the experiment. Uh, instead, uh, this massive, uh, massive simulation was able to understand what happened in particular the proton moves very fast along the surface. And, uh, so, uh, trapped at the surface of the membrane, uh, uh, property which might be important for the functionality of the cell. So that's where we are now, we want to, where we want to go from there. So, of course, I mean, the, the world that surrounds us has a such complexity and if you think of biology, if you think of nanoscience and so on, that uh, it is uh, really necessary uh, being able to describe larger and larger systems. Um, another uh, thing is to simulate the system for much longer time, having the simulation more accurate. And at the last but not least, uh, being able to understand uh, what goes on. The computer understands what the physics there is not good enough. It is a skill that has to understand. So, perform the simulation means knowledge. Okay.
from the algorithmic point of view, there is a big effort, and I have just uh, on uh, improving the scaling of the algorithm. Algorithm scales like the cubic power of, uh, of the number of particles or electrons in the system. So if you double the size, it goes by an order of magnitude, so it's just too big. Uh, there are good reasons for believing that uh, a molecular system, at least, uh, the chemist uh, is a local, uh, uh, the local business, uh, and so the chemistry taking place here yeah, should be decoupled from the chemistry taking place there, and I should be able to describe uh, this and this as the sum of the two, uh, but not without uh, this knowledge. So there's a big effort uh, in doing uh, lean. Uh, so transforming the algorithm by using chemistry, the chemical components of, of the short sightedness uh, to uh, transform in new algorithms. Uh, and there have been several, many, many attempts, and not all of them, uh, I mean, I think none totally satisfied. But size uh, is something which is easier in this sense. Uh, if you look at the big machine that I showed you earlier on, these are all parallel machines. They are under the parallel city working together. So if you have a big system, it's conceivable that you split the, your system, the big goes to one TQ, another bit to another TQ, uh, to the other. So you can use uh, fully the power of parallel machine to extend uh, the size of the city. The time uh, is a different story. Time is an integral sequential operation. It's a serial operation. You move uh, from time B, T plus one, plus two plus two. But you move in steps, and you have to do one after the other. And the speed with which you move from t to t1 depends on the, on the computer CPU clock time. And then there's, there's no problem. Actually, I mean, the prediction is that they will go slowly, go down, because in the extra scale machine, uh, power consumption is important, so to keep down the power consumption, it's likely that the new generation of computer will be slower in terms of CPU time. Okay, so, uh, so that's a big worry. And uh, it's a big worry, and if you look at the protein, there are many, uh, many uh, different uh, uh, timescales involved and by direct computer, well, we can only approach uh, this, this kind of origin. So most of the fun takes place on another, on another time scale. And uh, there are many reasons for this. Uh, for this uh, it's a factor that a lot of suppose you want uh, to study chemical reaction. From the reagent, uh, reactant, they got the product, uh, but there is a barrier between, and uh, to go from A to B, you have to go over this barrier, and the pro that means the probability of going over the barrier depends on the barrier height in an exponential manner. And so, if you start with your simulation here, uh, the this barrier is large, which is many, 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 several times the case, you remain stuck here. You waste your computer time by looking only the system wiggling and jiggling here. None of the important physics that is here. It's also a complication, but the potential energy is very rough. It's at the Swiss mountains. In a good day, and uh, the, the, the potential energy is a, a multi-scale thing. Lots of lots of 
so forth. Mountain passes and so on. So this is like a that new thing. A new uh, new thoughts. Um, what we have been working in the last zone no, in the last uh, in the last uh, uh, decade is a method which is called the metadynamics uh, that uh, we don't have time to discuss it, uh, but uh, the basic idea is to like, uh, I don't know, there the, are these uh, fairy tales by the Green Brothers uh, of, uh, of this boy lost uh, in the woods uh, that uh, lived behind the trace, uh, the trail. And uh, that's what we do. So we live behind the trail so that we can feel it, uh, all, the, all the valleys uh, can move from valley to valley and uh, reconstruct the land. Okay, so this has allowed us uh, to access uh, a time scale which uh, would be impossible. Huh? So this is something which in real time would, uh, would uh, last a uh, few seconds so, uh, to take place. We can see here, and this phenomenon is very important, is the phenomenon of uh, solidification. So we are a liquid, and, uh, and uh, we pull, pull it uh, at a melting temperature, or slide it below, and we see uh, how long it takes. Uh, it forms a crystal. So that's why I say order from chemistry is a phenomenon, it's a beautiful physical phenomenon of self self Okay? And, uh, you see the formation of the space. The same technique, you can look at the self assembly of nanostructures, like this. So guy is an experimentalist in the, in the formation, right? in master in the process. And uh, it's a nice, uh, nice application that we made uh, some time ago, uh, or recently, I must say. So this is urea in water, in theory. So if you put, uh, if you do the crystallization in water, you find this needle. But if you put uh, in, uh, uh, I don't know if it is uh, ethoxane or ethane, you choose another organic solvent, you find this shape, this shape, this shape, this shape, and we can predict it. And our friend in ETH, Professor Mazzotti, does the experiment and find very good agreement between our prediction and the experiment. So that, that our ambition here is to behind the, 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 the process of self assembly so we say we can uh, have nanocrystal of shape and therefore whose property can be somehow controlled. Uh, another interesting application, which is practical, uh, is the calculation of the binding energy of a protein with a ligand. Why do we do this? The ligand is uh, this molecule, and uh, this is an enzyme. Here there is an enzymatic center. If this is the enzyme of a nasty virus, if I can stop uh, its activity by sending uh, a molecule that goes in the enzymatic center and remains there flopped, I can intervene, I can, I can cure the disease. So that, uh, uh, many, many drugs are like that. And so this calculation can help us understand that in the speed of version that we have developed. Last issue is, uh, is the, the question of uh, can do many things, understand many systems. Uh, the I want to, to stress uh, the, the word understand. And if you look at 
atomistic, the output of an atomistic simulation is like this. Uh, it's a list of numbers. They say atom one, atom two, atom three, it gives its coordinates and the structure. So it's too much information. You really overwork. And uh, in this sort of way of projecting all this the multidimensional information onto at least I mean, the optimum is a two dimensional plane you can look at the understand. And for doing that we use methods uh, uh, adapted by us, uh, but basically coming from artificial uh, from computer science. Uh, of dimensional reduction. And the idea is, is the following. So we are here in a multidimensional space. We choose some landmark points here. And we calculate the distance between all these landmark points. Then we, we project uh, this multidimensional uh, data into two dimensions. And we try to make sure that in this two-dimensional space, the distance between the landmark is as close as possible to the distance in the original high-dimensional space. And uh, uh, if we do that, uh, then if there are out of sample uh, information, I can all project uh, relative to this. Uh, uh, Points in the argument are changed. It's easy. It's like uh, like having uh, 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 a system of reference. Uh, so on the earth we have the satellite, uh, and you're here, and from the distance of the satellite you can reconstruct the position, the similar concept. And for instance, one can here. Yeah, Look at the complicated behavior of the protein and map it out of all its phase uh, based behavior in two dimensions and understand that the very mean of the structure. Okay. The last thing, which is not so related to complexity, because it has to do how, how well we describe the system. You've seen, you scale the things, you've seen the structure from. Spheres, they have introduced to this direction. But what happens if the nuclei can treat as the nuclei as classical particles? But the uh, nuclei can be very light, like hydrogen. And there are many quantum phenomena associated with the, with the quantum behavior. So the, the way of describing the system is using the mapping, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the discretized version of part integral, which is classical particle, which is uh, uh, becomes uh, when described quantum mechanically, becomes uh, like a closed path, and uh, each system is replicated uh, several times. So it's like having uh, each field in the particle is a different world, and each world interacts with the other. Springs and uh, so the calculation becomes uh, more, even more uh, complex because you replicate your system uh, three times. Uh, uh, you develop the method of using color noise and you reduce, uh, so we go, you can reduce the cost of calculation by one order of magnitude. And uh, look at functional effect. Uh, really intriguing. So this is our old problem which we have seen in water uh, in, a, in a representation in terms of this uh, replicas. Huh? And you see here the problem is the real diffused uh, over several molecules. So <coughs> it's strongly disorganized. And I think with that uh, I will spare this time in the other.
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, nice and interesting talk. I enjoy and learn a lot. I think there are a lot of questions from the audience side. So, let's go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Many of us here are in one way or the other in all the universe and analysis. Listen, sorry. Yeah. They're involved in what? I didn't hear. Yeah. Numerical analysis. Okay, John. And um, so it would be very interesting if you could say which algorithms are particularly successful and used and in which way, way they are stable or how you have to stabilize them. Okay, uh, we use a lot of uh, many of the tools of uh, Uh, we start uh, using fast Fourier transform, which is uh, for the plane wave paper that we have in this part uh, of it. When we have to solve the optimization problem with precondition minimizers, That's the thing that comes to mind, but uh, I'm sure there are many more in every time to do this also. Okay. But uh, yes, we, we, we do need it. And I think there would be more involvement uh, in this subject uh, from the numerical analytic community, which has been focused mostly on, uh, on uh, two the dynamics, uh, this continuum equation. Move from there. There have been some groups that started doing that. But Professor Schulte in, uh, in Berlin is strongly interested in our way in that we have theorems, also looked at the, the many people are working on their own the long time space phenomena, including people that come from, from the climate. There is a lot of them, and there will be more, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, an area in which, uh, sorry, if I can, there would be, uh, there would be great benefit uh, from a uh, uh, mathematician in multi-scale uh, description. So, if you, you don't need to have the same resolution everywhere. So you can describe a bit uh, quantum mechanically, another bit uh, with molecular mechanics, and move to the continuum description. And people have done that, but in a rather ad hoc uh, and empirical way. And uh, rather uncontrolled, uncontrolled way. It would be a great area to work with. Them. Come back to this issue of, um, of kinetics. You argue that there are uh, two problems. One is that this activation barrier is, uh, is quite high, and the particles spend lots of time in the valley but never jumping over the mountain. And then you use this metadynamics, but I didn't fully understand how metadynamics really works. And to oh, we'll, take, we'll take the bit of time. I mean, yeah. in, in, so basically, Well, the idea is to identify the variables which are important for the, the flow bias. And uh, then uh, we construct a time dependent bias from X. You move, uh, so you, you keep memory that they've been there by adding a repartive potential. Push 
Python version is a bit more complicated than that. And the XC data that we can apply mathematician will demonstrate that uh, this method of proving for that is So that's the case. Yeah. You also then have this, this picture of the social mountains, and you spoke about the complexity of the energy landscape. Yes. Is this linked also with the dynamics directly or simplicity? It is, is uh, it yeah, the, 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 it's a good point. Uh, so the fact that we introduce uh, this collective approach, uh, reduce the trick from the system, in, and, uh, and we focus on the free energy, so the sort of average uh, out of static and the, uh, the short wavelength of, of, of the system. So, we start with the better half potential. And then you look at the free energy space that is a much smoother potential. So the metadynamics, uh, the aspects on the space, is exploring the thing, finding the product description, and also finding uh, manageable, so very uh, manageable the system. Is that part of the one and the So you had also mentioned in your presentation the issue of uh, wanting to be able to do lots of different possibilities uh, in simulation. Now, one of the big challenges that we have is still that the ex individual calculations are so expensive that it's really hard to do a large number of com computations. I mean, even in our group, we're, we're looking at projects where we're trying to explore systematic differences between different kinds of compounds, and we can maybe do 15, 20 compounds. But in, say, computational drug discovery, they want to do a million compounds, or you know, 100,000 at least, or something like that. So how do we get to the point with CPMD, quantum, or other methods, and reach the point where we can actually do these far uh, scale? I, I think the one, I mean, my model would be what they do in drug design. If a drug design, they want to explore cleaners of the system, that's a fact. And then uh, they search, which is very approximate on the Antonia, the most expensive of people, so they say, well, so they start to the feel of the terrace, the country, of possible candidates. Yeah. And then if you stay, uh, increase the level of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the system of your system, and so on and so on. Of course, you may use something. In the case of, uh, of drug design, a lot of the problems because of static effects in the problems in the material science, I think.
ask um, one more question. I think the, uh, the example of the potential energy landscapes, I assume that most of the time you assume that this energy landscape is like a constant, or it's not dependent upon temperature. No, no, I mean, okay. So I'm kind of wondering if there would be a significant amount of added complexity if the potential energy landscape becomes temperature dependent. I, 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 uh, for, for me, the energy landscape uh, is that potential. You or R1, R2, R3. That's what it is. So, and then if you are a steep or steel, then you look for the mean. Finish the session and go for the rest of the question for five minutes with Professor Parnell. To thank you again for your time which you shared with us. We have some <coughs> traditional gift from us.